got your Bibles this morning, would you turn with us in the Word of God in Matthew's Gospel in chapter number 27, chapter 27. He's reading, uh, was out of power all day yesterday, didn't have any power, that's, a no, that's the norm up at our house, we, uh, we uh, but the bill, it just it keeps it coming. It keeps it coming. They never miss a power bill. Yeah, funny how that you know, it's just amazing how that happens, Sister Donna. You know, they just, uh, the bill comes on right on time. But it's getting so, the, uh, the darkness just follows, uh, I mean, precedes the bill. I, I don't understand that. The darkness comes and the bill gets higher. Or the bill, uh, it just don't make any difference. It don't don't seem to change what they charge one bit. But uh, but anyway, well, they kept calling us yesterday. Oh, we we gonna get we got an update for you. We're gonna uh, the power will be back on at ten fifteen. Okay, ten fifteen came, and uh, or almost. And then we got another call from Charlotte, and it said, well. Will your power be restored at 12.15? All right. At about 10 minutes till 12, got another call, said your power will be on by 6.45. Okay. So just be around 5.30, about, no, it's about uh, 4 o'clock. I told Jane, I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up there and start that generator. We won't have no power. Got a little generator up there. So I went up there and started it up. James, what happened? The power, no, no. The gas line had had a leak in, and it was spurting gas out the side of it. Here I am up there putting the gas line on it. All right, I am working frantically. I mean, I am getting a gas. I just happen to have a piece of gas line, brand new. I pull the old gas line out, and make a long story short, and I got it back on there, just hooking it up. You know what Jean does? She steps out the door. I'm up there, froze, putting this thing on. Dane, the power zone. I thought I wanted to tell her, cut it off. <laughs> I got the generator working. I done been up there for two solid hours, freezing to death. She said, well, I asked her for went up there. I said, do you really want to watch television? Well, how long would it, would it be too, too much trouble? No. I said, I'll get it for you. And she was laying there in the recliner all covered up, you know. And I, I just don't want her to get cold. I'm try, trying to be a good husband, you know. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to take her up there with me and let her pull the rope. <laughs> uh-uh, no. All right, chapter 27. If you would, in verse number 45, 45, simple message today, three little words, my God, why? Would you stand with us in reverence to the Word of God? Look at verse number 45, verse number 45, chapter 27, and the Word of God says, here it is, it's just so plain and yet so simple, but yet so powerful. And the Word of God says now, 
From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calls for a lice. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let it. Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, would you add your blessings to the reading of the Word of God and touch our hearts that we might understand. And Lord, if we might, Lord, let that sink into our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right, as we begin to look at this, as we get closer to the uh, Easter season, we find Christ now, he has been tried. He's been convicted according to man here, and they, he, they have placed him upon the cross. And to give us just a little bit of the background here of where he's at, here he's placed in the in uh, the Rome, according to the Roman law, and they uh, I, uh, reading and going back on the cross and looking at it, and uh, many of you uh, you probably know about it, but anyway, the cross was placed there on a place they called the skull, and that uh, I don't know if you know about, uh, but it was placed there where the Romans. Uh, they called it the place of the skull because all of the, uh, the robbers and the thieves and all of this, they were taken there and placed there uh, for their crimes that they had done according to their uh, uh, judicial law. And they, they put Christ there, took Christ there. And uh, as I could find out, they said that they could not make more of a spectacle of him than uh, that, that and place him there. They said that if he had had a house or if he had had a home or a place where he uh, lived, you know the word of God said the birds have nests, the foxes have dens. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. All right, but they said if he had had a home, had a place where he had laid and stayed there inside the doors of it, they would probably have stood the cross up there in front of his door and crucified him in front of that house to make him look, they wanted to bring as much shame as they could bring upon him. And uh, But they put him, being he did not have a place, they took him to the place of the skull. And they said upon the, there at that place, there was bones scattered everywhere. There was bones all around everywhere on the ground. And that's the reason they called it the place of the skull because the many of them had been uh, 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 crucified there in that place and everybody could see him. And uh, my wife and I have been there and it is, it's just in behind where uh, there is a bus depot now and uh, it's standing up there on that hill and you can see it, brother, it, it, from Jerusalem, from there, and it, it, it's broadside and uh, that mountain, it looks just exactly like a skull and they placed him up there on that cross there so everybody could see him because they had called him a liar, they would called him a cheat. They'd called him a robber. They'd talk, called him everything they could. And here they'd placed him there. And there was nobody there but the women 
And three of them and John, they had come there and they had made as much, brought as much shame as they could upon him. But the thing about it, we're here in the midst of all of his torment on this cross. Here Christ, Christ cried out. Uh, he said, why? Why have, uh, Lord God, have you forsaken me? Why, God, why? And the thing about it was that the Lord uh, Christ had never been separated from God the Father. This uh, here he cried out. And I want you to notice something here that he said in verse number 45. And I want to use verse number 46 for a text this morning. But he said, and from a sixth hour, and uh, this was in the, the day started at six in the morning. And so of the sixth hour, would you go up there at 12 o'clock? All right, but he said into the ninth hour, that'd be three o'clock in the afternoon. All right, then he would, there was darkness there. The, over the land for three solid hours. They had made enough fun. They had br brought enough shame upon the darling son of the Lamb of God. And brother, I'll tell you, they had laughed him to scorn. Uh, they had beat him. Uh, they had, had uh, tore the flesh off of his precious body. And uh, for your sin and for my sin, uh, brother, I'll tell you, uh, we need to get a picture of that uh, in our mind this morning. Uh, we need to see him, uh, brother, that placed the crown of thorns uh, upon his head. Uh, they had pulled it down uh, upon his eye sockets. Uh, he couldn't see. Uh, there was none, uh, no, he did not... Uh, 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 rebelled upon any man uh, and brother they uh, come up there uh, and they wanted to take the name king of the Jews down uh, they wanted to vilify him they done spit upon him uh, they tore his beard from his face uh, oh I'll tell you I want you to think about it uh, brother I'll tell you uh, uh, the lamb of God uh, for dying for you and me uh, brother giving his life uh, Brother, uh, that was shed for you and I. And as a lamb uh, led uh, dumb before shears, uh, he opened not his mouth. Uh, he never said anything. Uh, he never uh, uh, cursed him. Uh, he never done anything but love you. Uh, that's what he was guilty of uh, for you and I. Brother, he, he was guilty uh, of loving you. Uh, he left the 99 uh, and he came for the one uh, and brother I was that one uh, brother that needed the blood uh, of the Lamb of God uh, brother I needed him uh, and brother God knew uh, that I needed him uh, and without the blood uh, of the Lamb of God brother uh, you and I brother will never make it in uh, uh, we need to get to him uh, we've got to get to him uh, without him brother uh, we we're never going to leave here. Uh, we're never going out of this world. Uh, we're, brother, uh, uh, the end time uh, is at the door. Uh, we're right at the door uh, of the rapture. Uh, we're at the door of the ca carrying away uh, of the church of the living God. Uh, brother, I'm going out of here uh, and I'm leaving here uh, and it's not going to be long. Uh, and brother, but about the ninth hour, uh, he begin uh, uh, the daylight begin to come back uh, and they begin to laugh at him uh, and they begin to scorn at him uh, but brother listen uh, he said my God why brother he uh, had never been uh, alone before uh, but he was alone uh, forsaken uh, by God the Father uh, forsaken by everybody uh, he was alone because uh, the cup of your sin uh, and my sin uh, was poured out upon him. Uh, he was dying for you, sister uh, and brother. Uh, he was dying because uh, you were going to hell uh, and uh, you needed God. Uh, you needed some help. Uh, you needed somebody uh, to die for you uh, in your place. Uh, you needed somebody uh, to pay your debt. Brother, uh, 
but they needed to, he we needed somebody. We needed somebody like we had never needed anybody before. But Brother Besson, but the thing about it was, uh, it had been foretold uh, in the book of Psalms uh, in chapter 22 uh, and verse number 1. There was a prayer that was prayed uh, from the lips of David. And the prayer was this, uh, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I went back, uh, and as far as I could read from commentary after commentary, uh, they said uh, that he quoted this entire psalm upon the cross. I did not know that. They said they believed that he quoted not only the verse, but he quoted the entire psalm upon the cross. I do not know. Only thing I know, that he died for me, and he shed the blood that I needed. Brother, when he called and said unto the Father, it's finished, glory to God, that's when I could go in. Brother, uh, hallelujah to God. Brother, what we need, uh, brother, is why is this saying alone given? Brother, why was it given uh, on, in Hebrew? It was because he was dying for the Jew. But because at that point in time, it wasn't finished. Did you think about it? It wasn't finished right then. For you and I, but it was going to be. It was going to be, Donna. It was that close. It was that close. But the thing about it, we have Old Testament Scripture fulfilled at the crucifixion. We have it, brother. The thing about how clearly Jesus understood the prophecies. Look at Matthew chapter 20. Back up just a few verses. And listen to what he said in chapter 20, 17, 18, and 19. Oh, I'll tell you. And he said here, And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed unto the chief priest and the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Oh, glory to God. Listen, he knew what the Scripture said. The third day, hey, he's a coming out, boy. I'll tell you, I'm coming up. I'm keys coming out. I'm coming up. Brother, because he came out, I'm going up. Brother, you think about it. I've, I've got something about it. Look in chapter 26. Look in chapter 26 in verse 24. And look what he said. And he said something here that if I could find it real quick. And he said here in verse 24, The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Boy, I'll tell you. See, the Scriptures, that, that God knew what was going to happen. The Son of Man is God. Jesus Christ is God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, all three are one. They had separate parts. You have, listen, your body is one, but each one has a different function. You can't take one, you can take this arm off, but listen, the body's still here. But the thing about it, every part of this body has a function. And see, when they nailed him to the cross, to, hey, that body didn't quit functioning. It was just separated in glory for a little while. And after three days, he was in the tomb. I mean, he was, he was placed in a tomb after the crucifixion. 
Then he was here, he was here for 40 days. Think about it now. Here, and uh, the body was not complete in glory. Totally. But the thing about it, then he ascended back and the Godhead was complete in glory. Amen, brother. But the thing about it, but he said, this same Jesus, Acts chapter 1, brother, he said over there, he said, this same Jesus that you see going up is coming again. Amen. He's coming back. But he went back to glory. Then now the Godhead is complete in glory. Hey, I'm not complete. Hey, I'm going to glory. I came from God and I'm going back to Him. It all started in heaven one day. God went went all over the earth and God sent me to the Adam's household. And now, I chose to serve Him. God said, choose you this day whom you will serve. You're going to make a choice to serve God or you're going to make a choice to go to hell. Either one you're going to do. You're going to make that choice. Then one of these days, Christ is coming back in the air. He's not coming back to the earth. He's not coming back. He's coming back. He's going to toot and I'm going to scoot. And we're going out of here. We're, he's not to say, that's not the second coming. He's just coming in the air. And the church is going to rise. The born again children of God. Those in the ground and those that are alive and remain. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 through 18. You think about it. Boy, I mean they're going out of here. This is what he died for. He said, my God, my God, Why? Boy, your sin and my sin, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, the nails that held him on the cross. It was the love of God that kept him there. It was your sin and my sin that placed him there. But it was the love of God that kept him there because he fulfilled the word of God. The power of God kept him there because the power of God is love. God loved you so much that he died for you. That's how much he, that's how he died. He died to love you. Not only that, the crucifixion was foretold in amazing detail. Look in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy in chapter 21, in verse 23, listen to what he said. He said here, he said, his body shall not remain. Now he says this, he said, all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. And for that he hanged is, and for he that is hanged is accused of God, that thy, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Don't you leave nobody hanging overnight. If you're, don't you, you take him down. Listen, God put that in the law. The law had to be fulfilled. They took him down and they placed him in a tomb. He was, he died upon the cross on the Passover. He's our Passover lamb. He's the lamb of God. Brother, I'll tell you, he said, when you see the blood, when you see it on the doorpost and on the lintel, I will pass over you. Brother, I play, he placed the blood upon my soul when I came and confessed my sin and I accepted him as my Savior, my Lord, and my God. Brother, that's what got me in to heaven when he placed my name on the Lamb's book of life. That's as plain as I know how to put it. But the thing about it is, thus we have overwhelming proof of the inspiration of the Scriptures and the deity of Christ. Look in Luke. In Luke chapter 24. 
In Luke chapter 24, look what the Word of God tells us. In chapter 24, in verse 25, 26 and 27, And he said unto them, Fools, slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory? And the beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Listen, so what is he talking about? He's talking about all of the scriptures and all of the prophets and all of the scriptures. And he had to fulfill the entire Bible. And then he said, my God, why? My God, why? Because him and God were separated. Oh, he was separated. Oh, he looked around and he was alone. He was alone. Oh, he's by himself. You ever been scared? You ever been really scared? Oh, I'll tell you. I've been scared. I mean, I I was scared one night something terrible. And brother, you can be scared terribly. And being scared, I'm going to tell you, and being alone... It's awful. Now, brother, I'm going to tell you, that's something else. You ever been snipe hunting? Come on. Have you? I have. Boy, they took me out one night with stringing beans. We had a pile of beans. Everybody, anybody ever been to a bean stringing? Have you? Oh, I went to one here... Uh, it ain't been, it's been several years ago for a missionary that we support here at the church. They had a pile of means. It was, it was big, but it's a long time ago. We was, uh, I don't know, you said you knew some doulas. You ever, do you know Louis Doula? Yeah. Louis had a big, we lived, we sharecropped for a place to live. Up here above where the dam's at. Up here, the, the dam took his place, his big farm. And anyway, they had a pile of beans, Lord and mercy God, come in there with a pickup load and dump them off and lit a, lit a lanterns or I forget why, I don't know what kind of lights they had. I don't remember. But we had, we had strung beans and strung beans, strung beans. And it was about one or two o'clock in the morning. And I didn't know nothing about no snipes and me and us boys. And they took they took us up there and they told us what to do and all this stuff. And uh, us youngins. And boy, we went up there about an hour or something like that. And man, come to myself, buddy. I said, uh-uh, oh, this ain't right. This ain't right. And I went down there and I told him, boy, I said, listen, we're going to the house. This, this is a bunch of junk. It's, them guys have tricked us. And, buddy, we went down through there. And, boy, I mean, we were walking, but, buddy, we were scared. And another time, uh, we got locked out of the house. And it's in the night. And the others run off and left me. Some I don't know where they went, but I found a knife outside the house. And buddy, I cut the screens off of the doors. Now, buddy, I was scared, but I was more scared when Dad and Mom got home. Mm. But buddy, I'll tell you, being scared. That was only two times, except for one time when I jumped my brother in the cornfield. <laughs> but the thing about it is, since God gave special emphasis to the prophecy, He fulfilled it right here. And having repeated exactly, exactly in Hebrew what David said over here. You know, God's going to come back and He's going to sit on His throne in the, in the city of Jerusalem. 
He's going to take that rightful place and he's going to sit there. And the thing about it is, you know, God forsook Jesus. He forsook him on the cross as bearing sins for the world. And I want us to look and think about this. You know, we would need to note the, the method of the address as he was saying, my God, my God. He was looking all the way through the scriptures. You would look, and he even told it over there in Matthew's gospel when the uh, disciples come to him. Uh, and brother, I tell you, have you ever tried to really pray in your house? You ever tried to really get down and go to God in your home? Boys, I'll tell you, the phone will ring. Uh, there'll be some distraction. Uh, buddy, there'll be something to come along uh, and break the concentration. Uh, there'll something happen nearly every time. Uh, brother, you need to get alone. Uh, he told them, he said, when you go to the closet, you close that door. Uh, in other words, you get alone. Uh, you get somewhere by yourself. Uh, you close the world out uh, and I don't know how many was here uh, if any of you were uh, when I brought that uh, that uh, wrap and I, I brought the prayer shawl uh, brother when you pull that prayer shawl up over you uh, brother you pull it up over you uh, and uh, every string on that every thread uh, has an important part uh, in that uh, but anyway uh, when you get alone with God uh, and the thing about it was uh, he had never been alone. Uh, he had never been apart from God. And the thing about it was uh, in some wonderful way he had told them here. Uh, he said uh, hey, when you go to him, uh, he said our Father uh, which is in heaven uh, hallowed be thy name. Uh, God's name is to be hallowed. Uh, it's to be holy. Uh, brother he had always said uh, oh my Father uh, uh, brother, he had always said, go to my father. Uh, it's my father and your father. Uh, but brother, he had never written the word of God as I could find it. Uh, he had ever called him God. Uh, but here I'm going to tell you right now, uh, brother, uh, here was a lamb of God. Uh, here was this lamb uh, uh, being slaughtered. Uh, he was blatant out. Uh, brother, he had looking for uh, his God. Uh, and my God, uh, he was needing some help right here. Uh, he was alone, uh, brother. But the thing about it was, uh, here Jesus Christ bore the sins. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, in chapter 5, uh, I want us to look at something. Uh, as we look at this, uh, and look what God did, uh, what he said here. Uh, and uh, I, I, can't, uh, I can't stress it enough. Uh, to believe what he is uh, talking about. Uh, he said here, if I can find it quickly, uh, and he, he was talking, uh, and uh, he said uh, that he was alone, uh, and he needed somebody, and he needed help, uh, and he needed it bad. Uh, in chapter, I said chapter 5, I mean chapter 15. Uh, and uh, what he was saying, uh, and I'll find it just in a minute, if you'll give me just a second to, and brother, but what uh, uh, I couldn't uh, understand it till I, I got through to this. He said in three and four, uh, and uh, what, he said this. Uh, he said, uh, and he was uh, seen uh, in the, uh, uh, the twelve, uh, and here he was with them many times. Uh, many times he was with them, uh, and he was also uh, he had uh, been with them so much uh, and he had told them uh, that he loved them uh, and he would uh, he had uh, bore their sins and he had suffered with them uh, and he had loved them uh, but he said and he uh, that was seen of uh, Caiaphas and of the twelve uh, and after that he was seen uh, above 500 brethren at once uh, of whom the greater part remain under this present uh, but some had fallen asleep. Uh, brother, that was proof uh, that he had come back, uh, that he was alive, uh, and he had did, uh, alive forevermore. But in 2 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, also uh, in chapter 8, uh, in 
I want us to look at something in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And the Bible says here, he said in verse 9, look what he says. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that he through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice that this is expedient for you who have begun before now not only to do, but also be forward a year ago in First John. First John, listen to what the Word of God says. Here is just one little chapter, or three little chapters, but in First John chapter 2 and verse 2, and listen, he said, and he is a, the Pure petition uh, for our sins, uh, propitiation uh, for our sins, uh, and not uh, yours, not for ours only, uh, but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh, you think about this now. Uh, I know I kind of messed that up a little bit, uh, but I run those references. Uh, but I thought about this. Uh, you think about every sin uh, that was in this world uh, that was. On, on every man, ever drunk, ever drug addict, uh, everything you've ever done, every lie you've ever told. Uh, and brother, don't th- tell me you've never told a lie, because boy, I'll tell you, I know you have. Uh, brother, all of us have. Uh, brother, we come in one day, uh, and mama uh, caught us uh, uh, eating some cookies, uh, and, and Larry said, yeah, he did it. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you, you asked him about it. It. Uh, and he said, now, now I know uh, 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 Dean probably got into them, but he said, now, don't you, uh, and you never touched a one of them. Uh, no, Mama, you know I didn't do it. Uh, and he had chocolate candy cookies all around his mouth. Mama, you know uh, I didn't do it. Said She said, now, Larry, you know you ain't supposed to lie. Brother, see there? Uh, boy, we'll lie to get out of anything, won't we? Uh, brother, I'll tell you, I that's natural. That's, that's we learned to do that from our youth up, uh, brother. But the thing about it was, uh, all of that was placed on the Lamb of God. Every bit of it was. And but the thing that uh, really locks it all down. So he done that so sinners would not have to go to hell. Amen. Now let's wrap this all up and put it in one little ball. My God, why? My God, why? Here he is. Here's the Lamb of God hanging on the cross. And as he is hanging there, in John chapter 20, John's Gospel. Now I want you to look at this. Let's go to John chapter 8 first, in verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Now, when when the light or the lamp is lit in a dark place, it's going to shine forth a light. Now, I want you to take this and put it in your heart if you've got it. All right, and it says, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. All right, now think about it. Look in chapter 9, and look at verse number 5. Now stay with me. I'm going to get this straight. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said... I am He. You'll know Him if you really have Him. You'll know the real thing when you've got it. If you've really got Him in your heart and in your life, you'll know it's a real thing. Now, think about it. Think about what you've got. 
Now won't you look in 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and verse 20. And then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be you reconciled to God. God is your leader, the one you are sowed to and fastened to. So sinners in hell forever are forsaken by God. But you are not. Now I want you... We believe that the sufferings of Christ on the cross. Now think about it. In some measure the picture of the sufferings in hell. Now I want you to transfer this. Stephanie knows what transferring is all about. She does it every day. I want you to transfer. I read from Matthew Henry. I read from other, you read from everything. All these other commentaries. Now, you take all of the sufferings on the cross. All of the sufferings. Every, 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 every lash. Every lash, every beat, every every hair that's pulled from his face, everything that's torn from him, all of the thirst, probably everything that was done to him from the very day he was born till the day that he came and he was placed in the tomb. And you multiply that by 10,000 times. Do you want to go to hell? And it's forever and ever and ever and ever. No, you can't imagine that. And you can't multiply that by 10,000 times either. Because he suffered like no man ever suffered. And that's what then hell is going to be like. The singularity of it. In hell. The fires of hell will be wrapped around them. The thirst will be as he was. If there can be a worse thing. No man suffered. Did you read the scripture? Did you take the scripture as I read it? No man ever suffered like he did. Hell is going to be like he was. Forever and ever and ever. Do you want to go there? Or do you want to accept him? And he said, on the cross he cried, I thirst. Oh, that thirst was beyond understanding. It was beyond thirst. He had been beaten, stuck with the sword. He had been ripped open. He had been, the spikes had been driven in. And you think about this. Sinners in hell will still be blinded because he was blinded. As the thorns are read from a doctor's point of view, and as they pull the thorns down, the long thorns stuck all the way through the eyeballs till the mucus in the eyes ran down his cheeks. But they run, when they stuck it in, they ran to the distant side of his mouth where he could not drink the mucus. There's no way it could get in his mouth because his head drooped forward. He could not drink it. 
He said, I thirst. I'm thirsty. Oh. And the weight of his body crushed his chest. And he stood hung there and smothered to death. Oh, just one. He was choking to death. The body, not the love of God. First Corinthians. Oh, First Corinthians. I want you to look at something. In First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. And the Word of God said, But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man can't understand. I'm done. The thing about it, folks, he asked, he said, my God, why? I can answer that question. It's all because he loved you and he loved me. Let's stand. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as we stand together this morning, Lord, as we stand before you and I'll stand and give an account, God, I hope I've met your qualifications. Lord, I pray, dear God, that something's been said or done to touch a life or cause a heart or a precious soul to look just a little bit closer at their life. Maybe they could say, my God, why am I not walking just a little straighter? My God, why am I not witnessing just a little more? My God, why am I not praying a little harder? My God, why am I not standing up for you? God, why am I not praising you? Just a little more. My God, why am I not more faithful? Lord, one day they'll answer all these questions as well as I when we stand at the judgment bar of God. Lord, help us look at ourselves and judge ourselves that we won't have to be judged. Oh, precious God. If there be one or more here today that don't like what they're seeing, may they come to this altar, Lord, and God, they make it, make it straight. Make it right that they can walk straight, that they can live right, and they won't say, my God, why, in defeat. But Lord, they'll say, my God, why am I not more like Him? Lord, help me be more like Jesus every day. Lord, help us search our souls.